Ty Taylor, Jolly O. Aren't you supposed to be in England? I, I am here right now, uh, okay. and I only have a few seconds before I jump on a train. Uh, are you going to be around for the next three weeks? Yeah, I'm working on the leg. Of course I'm around. All right, that's going to be on hold. Do you, do, are you familiar with the uh, Great Guitar Build-Off? Yes. Well, you're in. you got three weeks to pull it off. I know you can do but, it. But I have the leg. No, no, there's no but. I'll talk to you soon, bud. Did he just hang up on me? All right, let's build a guitar. All right guys, looks like we're building a guitar and a guitar that you can actually own. And I'm gonna explain that a little bit later in this video, but for now, my kit just arrived from Crimson Guitars and I need to start working on the shape of the body. That'll work. Wait, upside down. Stella, what do you think? Do you like it? What do you think? Okay. All right, let's get to building, huh? Come on. Now, I don't know much about guitars, more like I don't know anything about them. I've never built one, and I didn't know that establishing that center line was so crucial to the entire build. So luckily, I was able to call Ty, and he kind of gave me the lowdown on the entire thing. Now that I got my center line, I think I'm good, and thank God Ty kind of walked me through it. The velocity is moot. Speaking of Ty, so yesterday I was at his place, right? And I was just getting a crash course on the guitar because, you know, I never made one. And he taught me everything. And then, look what I stole from him. Oh my God! Yep, he's got no clue that this is missing from his shop. So, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be mad. Because this is spectacular flame and wood maple that I'm sure he wanted to use for a project, but it's going on my project. Now that I have a cardboard template with a straight center line, I can transfer that onto a piece of half inch MDF. Cut it out over at the bandsaw and refine all the edges on my oscillating sander. Because we're going to be adding a quarter inch of the stolen maple onto the front of the guitar, I need to remove a quarter inch off the body that came with the kit, so I took it over to my big boy bandsaw and resawed that quarter inch off. Now this stolen flame maple is bookmatched, and I need to join it perfectly down the middle. And to do that, I pulled out my Bridge City Toolworks mini block plane and got to playing. This little guy feels amazing in the hand, but more importantly, it came scary sharp out of the box. So I didn't need to sharpen it at all, and I can just jump right into work. After I have the two matching pieces perfectly jointed, I can glue them together. And to make sure they don't move around in my clamps, I just put some painter's tape on the front to hold them in place while the glue dried. The back, the back still has some glue spots, so we gotta, we gotta remove that before we can actually drum sand it. I used the chisel to clean off the big blobs of glue and ran it through my drum sander off camera, and now we can glue it to the front of the body. I wanna make sure that I didn't have any voids in it, so I put plenty of glue and lots of clamps with calls on them to distribute the pressure evenly. Then I drilled pilot holes big enough for my flush trim bit to fit through and routed out the slots for the neck and the bridges. But then I ran into an issue with how to align the body with that MDF template, which didn't have any holes. So I figure I can use that quarter inch cutoff of ash that we cut earlier on the bandsaw and glue them together. Now I can position it so that the slots line up and trace the guitar onto the body. Wait, 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 wait. No! <laughs> Boy, that I almost screwed the pooch on this one. So, um, I traced it onto my, you know, to be like this, which is a lefty. It needs to go this way. That would have been bad. That would have been really bad. But I think 
we're back on track. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna retrace it in the right orientation and then we're gonna use double-sided tape to tape that template on there and we can cut it out at the bandsaw. <laughs> So we got 36 strips of ebony cut out for the back of the guitar. And you're probably wondering why I need 36 strips because obviously this would be a lot more to cover the entire guitar, but we're going starburst pattern. So let's go. After doing some serious math to figure out the angles of my triangles, I can throw the design into my laser and start cutting them out. Unfortunately, this ebony is so dense that it barely scored it at full power, and I needed to run them through my drum sander so that I can thin them out in order to break off the sides. Alright guys, so I have 36 of these triangles cut out, and I have no idea what I'm doing, because I've never done anything like this before, and I'm really concerned it's not going to work, and I'm just wasting time. But I think it's going to look really cool if it works, so let's just give it a go. After a lot of planning to get the edges on the triangles to line up, a little bit of glue, and lots of painter's tape, we have a starburst pattern that we can glue up on the back of the guitar. And I glued this up in sections. I first glued up about three or four triangles, and then I can actually stand them up like a, like a pyramid and glue the rest of the sections together. And before you know it, I have a starburst pattern that is under a bunch of hand planes so that it stays flat. While that glue sets up, I can turn my attention to trimming out the edges of the guitar. So I ripped a couple of strips of ebony to an eighth of an inch thick. Now I've done some wood bending before, but never this intricate, and I had no idea on how to do this. So Ty suggested that I use a heat bender, and it's a weird shaped iron basically that produces heat, and you can slowly form any piece of wood to the desired shape you want. All right, my beautiful friends, so we got the guitar trim, right? That's what we're calling it. We got it situated here in the clamps. I'm gonna leave it overnight, let it marinate, let it take that beautiful guitar form that we want, right? Also got this little S shapey shape right there, and that's gonna go right there. So I think we're looking good. We might make the deadline. Things are looking up. While that ebony sits in the forms for a couple of days, I can start working on the back of the guitar. And the plan is to actually cut out a skull shape in the back on the laser and then pour white epoxy into it. But first I need to know where the holes on the back are located. So I just use some tracing paper to trace the original guitar shape onto there and I can take it over to the bandsaw and cut out the oversized body. Then I can run it through my drum sander to get it nice and flat, mark those pilot holes that I'm gonna be using later on to run the strings through, and then I can jump over to the laser and start cutting out the shape for the skull. But first, I wanna run a couple of test pieces to make sure it actually cuts through. All right guys, it's been one of those frustrating evenings. So I started running some test pieces in the ebony to make sure my laser was cutting it all the way through, and guess what? It wasn't so my concern here is that if I don't cut it all the way through I'm gonna need to sand the back of it it's gonna bring it super thin and then I'm gonna pour the epoxy in it and I might have to sand that and we just might not end up with any ebony left so I called my buddy Grant and he's like hey come on over to the house I got a better laser than you so we're on our way to his house it's super late but I hope we're gonna you know cut it out on his better laser. So I made it to Grant and his bigger, better laser is not working, but we're it still blew it up a little bit. We can adjust the size. Yeah. So all that's going to get inlaid and this is going to get cut out in laser. So then this part pops up out and just drop a line on the laser on your with, and I'll drop that line directly through his forehead and through his bottom two teeth. Give him some gold teeth. <laughs> Dude, that's not a bad idea. Give him some OG. For real? Grant is hooking up a compressor hose to his laser to get more power. He's MacGyvering his own laser for me. Thanks, buddy. That's how we roll, hey, baby. baby. <laughs> I am paranoid about putting that Starburst that in there. You're paranoid? I'm paranoid. I, I just spent I three days, wanna, three days making it. I don't want to do it, Mark. I think it may be time. 
He's nervous. I'm a wreck inside. A wreck. Okay. Please be very careful. It does feel like a baby, doesn't it? <laughs> yep. You click start on your Okay, go for it. Man. Once through the drum sander, should be good. Uh, God, I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna touch this thing right now. Six hours of cutting out this ebony. It is by far the hardest material I've ever worked, well, the hardest wood I've ever worked with. But we got it cut out and we need to glue it onto the body of our guitar. And do you guys wanna see how intricate all these little cuts were? It got to the point where I actually had to uh, put them on a separate sheet with a template because the pieces were so little and so tiny that they were just falling out. But it's time, let's glue this thing on and then we can pour some epoxy. So nervous. Please don't break, please don't break. Oh, okie dokie. Got ourselves the back of the guitar and I hope that you guys appreciate the amount of work that just went into the back of the guitar so if you do hit that subscribe and that bell notification so I know that you guys care and that you guys love what I do plus if you hit that bell notification you get notified next time I upload a video so all right now that we have this thing cut out um, I'm really afraid that this white epoxy that I'm about to put in here is gonna bleed through because of all the charring and all the little edges, right? So I reached out to some friends on Instagram and my buddy Gavin at 42 Pursuit said, go ahead and seal it with shellac. So if Gavin's wrong and it bleeds through, we're gonna have words, but we're gonna try it anyway. Inlay the skull into the back of the guitar. I'm using Thick Set Epoxy from Totobo, the sponsor of this video. Totobo has been a longtime supporter of the channel, and they were actually my very first sponsor who took a shot on me. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. To me, they're more like a family than just a company. And when I told them that I was building a guitar for my charity, No Dogs Left Behind, they offered to donate a thousand dollars to them, and that just fills my heart. You guys know that I'm a huge animal lover and for them to do something like that is just beyond generous. Thank you to Total Boat for supporting my crazy projects. More on my charity and where you can actually buy raffle tickets to win this guitar a little bit later in the video. But now let's get back to the build. my friend so we made this little doohickey that's gonna you know psh, psh, help with our magnet stuff and this little compartment will pop in here like so and then we can use our doohickey to pull it out and it's got felt on the back so it won't scratch the guitar all right guys so it's been 48 hours and this epoxy is still not hardened to the point where it's sander ready. 
And I'm racking my brain why that is. I mean, we're pouring an eighth of an inch thick. I've poured this epoxy plenty of times to know that I can pour up to an inch and within 48 hours, it's gonna be rock hard. So what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. It's cold in the shop. It's 68 degrees in here. Um, I know I'm wearing all this fancy Timberland Pro gear to keep me nice and warm, but it just didn't even dawn on me that it's gonna affect the epoxy. So what we're gonna do is crank that heat up and get it past that hardness point where I can actually put it through the sander and get going. But in the meantime, there's a few little tiny touches that we can add to this guitar to make it stand out from the rest and win a little cheddar cheddar for our charity. Let's go. Heat it up. Now I'm ready to glue up the edge banding of the guitar. At least that's what I'm calling it. And I did make a few guitar shaped clamp pads so that I can actually clamp everything together without it flying apart. Okay, that was insanely stressful. I got clamps where I don't think I was gonna be able to get clamps and I needed to use shims around just to kind of bring that trim into the body. But it's looking pretty darn good right now. I don't even want to touch it. We're going to leave it. We're going to let it sit overnight. Tomorrow, hopefully, we can take this thing off. Whew! Oh my goodness. After taking it out of the clamps, I can plane down the excess ebony and fill any of the voids from the glue up process with wood glue and ebony dust. Then I can insert the neck into the body and get my first look at this bad boy that I'm calling darkness after my cat. Ooh, buddy. You are so sexy, but I think we gotta bring you down a fraction. So this sits flush. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, I, I love this part. Most guitars, it ends like into there. This one has a little return. Oh, body. Next, I can drill the holes for the mounting screws and test their fit. Then I can countersink for the washers, drill the holes in the neck, insert threaded inserts, and secure the neck to the body permanently. With that done, I'm ready to drill for the electronic switches. And I don't know their official names or what they do, so I'm just gonna make up my own. All right, so we have Waka switch and the BOW. That's, that's, what, that's what they are, okay? And no idea what they do. So what we're gonna do is phone a friend because we have that option. Luckily, we have that option. Sorry, dude. Mr. I, Ty Taylor, in the house. My phone was on silent. I couldn't figure out why I kept missing your calls. That's okay. That's okay. You need to apologize to the people. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey. All right, Mr. Taylor, I got a question. Troll panel, socket, the, the compartment that holds all these doodads, the pow. Yeah, I named them. The waka, the pow and the shimmy shake. So when I insert these into my, the pocket, right? Where I put them, that is where the knobs are going to be on the outside of the guitar. Correct. Okay. Do they need to be in any specific orientation? Like location? Does the walk on need to be next to the pound? The switch be the last thing. The shimmy shake? Guitar. If I have it like this, can you see? Yeah, that's perfect. So the switch 
closest to the butt. Okay, so tone and volume, and this is the the power switch. The three-way switch. Three-way. I knew it was a three-way. I knew it. I knew it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ty Taylor, the greatest guitar maker in the world. If you don't know Ty Taylor, make sure you check out his YouTube, his Instagram. His, you have a TikTok? I don't. He doesn't, so next week he'll have a TikTok, trust me. All right. Thanks, buddy. Love you. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Love you. He did say I love you too. Now that I know their locations, I can drill those holes out. And I was going to drill them freehand, but then I got smart and took them over to the drill press and was able to drill all three holes without any issues. And now I can focus on staining this beautiful quilted maple. And I've really been looking forward to this. I'm using a black leather dye first, working it around with a lint-free shop towel. Then I can sand most of it back, leaving the black that penetrated deeper into the quilting. Then I do the same exact thing with the brown dye, and I did this process a couple of times with the brown, putting more on the edges and sanding out in the middle. That gave me that cool classic guitar look that looks amazing on this guitar. Ty's checking my work. Just double checking, make sure I didn't screw something up, because he just laughed at me that I drilled these backwards. He thought I did it as a joke. Get this top. The wood? Yeah. I borrowed it. <laughs> Is this mine, dude? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll return it. No, you won't. <laughs> Maybe a different species, but it'll be returned. You're a jerk. <laughs> That's what friends are for. Yeah. After Ty left without his quilted maple, I sealed the stained guitar with a sanding sealer. And while that dried, I can do some carving on the neck. Because the ebony on the edges of this guitar were sharp and I didn't want the winner of this guitar to end up in a hospital, I ended up putting a 1 16th round over on all the edges so that, so that it feels good in the hand. And with all those little details done, I can finally start the finishing process. I sanded the entire guitar up to 1500 grit and applied three coats of finishing epoxy. This was my first time finishing this way, but I guess this is a new traditional way of finishing guitars. And holy cow, that finish is buttery smooth. All right guys, so that's it. That's the very last thing that I needed to do on this guitar. And now I can actually assemble it and see what it sounds like. Yeah, buddy. All right guys, so the guitar is done and I could not be happier with the way it turned out. Like I mentioned before, this is my very first guitar build. And for it to turn out this way, 
I'm proud. I'm pretty proud of it. So this guitar and all the other guitars built in this challenge are going to be raffled off for charity. Half of the proceeds are going to go to Crimson Guitars charity to provide kits like I had, guitar making tools, and even classes to people who need them and just can't afford them. The other half of the proceeds is going to go to my charity, No Dogs Left Behind. They fight against animal cruelty and to stop the illegal dog meat trade. That's right, there's people who are actually eating Cocker Spaniels. And these guys, they're like the ninjas of the dog rescue world. All right, now to win this guitar. All you gotta do is go to the description of this video, select great guitar giveaway, and buy a raffle ticket. They're like three pounds, which is, I think, $3.70 US. That's right, you can own this guitar for under four bucks. And the more raffle tickets you buy, the more chances you have winning. This is for a great cause, and you get a pretty cool guitar. I wanna thank Crimson Guitar for putting on this challenge and giving me the opportunity to participate. Make sure you guys check out them in the description below. And obviously, Totobo, they're an awesome supporter of the entire community, which I absolutely love. And they're donating money, hard earned money to my charity, which is, it's mind blowing to me. I also wanna thank Casey Reeves. He's the one that's playing the guitar right now. That's the music that you're hearing in the background. We were at Ty's last night till about midnight and he was just shredding. So make sure you guys follow him. GMAC Bakes, he's the one that helped me with the laser. He rigged his laser so I can cut the skull out. And obviously Ty Taylor, without him, I, I could not get this project done. I would call him like 10 times a day, FaceTime him while he's having dinner and he would talk me off the ledge and get me back on track. And obviously I wanna thank you guys. Without you guys, I couldn't build and do the things that I do. So thank you so much for joining me on this experience. Now let's let Casey take us out.